What is going on guys, my name is John, and welcome back to yet another video. Out of the many new Pokemon available in Pokemon Sword and Shield, Alchemy is definitely one of the most unique ones of the bunch, as it has many different forms that are available to collect. But what does it take to get them all? Today we're going to find out how easily you can get every flavor of Alchemy in Pokemon Sword and Shield. For those who don't know, Alchemy is a fairy type Pokemon that was revealed earlier this year for Pokemon Sword and Shield. This Pokemon was apparently made intentionally so everyone could have their own special form based on their favorite colors and styles. But what if you're a completionist and want to collect them all? Before we go over how many we'll need to get, let's first take a look at how to just get the Pokemon. So Alchemy is actually a stage 1 Pokemon and evolves from the Pokemon Milsuri. Milsuri is obtainable in only a few locations in the game, but it's still relatively easy to find. The most common location that players find them is on Route 4, where there are random exclamation point encounter in the grass. They have a 20% encounter rate, but thankfully because breeding is so convenient in this generation, you can just get one and hatch a ton of them very quickly. Now that we're able to create an infinite supply of them, how exactly do we evolve these things? This Pokemon is very interesting as it needs a new item and a new method to this generation to evolve it. Let's talk about the item first. So the main requirement to evolving it is that it needs to hold a sweet item. This is more of a general term, as there are quite a few different items that can be used to evolve Milsuri. Each of them are based around a specific fruit or decoration piece, but more importantly they change the color of what Alchemy will evolve into. There's a little more to this concept, but we'll come back to that in a little bit. Obtaining the items to evolve Milsuri is by far the hardest part of the equation. As of the day this video goes up, there is currently only one location that you can go to to obtain the sweets. The Battle Cafe. This is a location that is available relatively early in the game, but there are multiple locations that you can visit as you progress through the rest of the region. In total, there are three cafes, and they're all located in the main big cities, Motostoke, Hammerlock, and Winden. The battle cafes have basically only one thing you can do, which is battle the man behind the counter. The cafe master will only have the same two Pokemon every time you challenge him, but their team will be at a different level depending on which location you choose to battle in the region. These battles are in no way difficult, especially if you've beat the game already, but the biggest issue is the fact that you're not guaranteed a sweet item. No matter which location you go to, you have a 1 out of 21 chance to be given the specific suite that you're looking for. But if you're just starting out, you have about a 24% chance to get at least one of the suites no matter which place you go to. Now this seems like a relatively easy task to do, but another big issue is that this is one of those events that you can only do once per day. On the upside, this time frame is individually applied to each location, so you technically have 3 chances a day to get one of the suites. I know some people might point out that you could advance the clock or let the time roll over to the next day, but unfortunately that exploit doesn't entirely work in these games. For specific daily events, if you change the switch's internal clock, the game will detect the time change and restrict you from using it until the next calendar day. This is somewhat the same concept as the Honey Trees or Pal Park from Generation 4, but we'll talk more about that idea in a little bit. For now, let's figure out how long it would actually take to get every alchemy flavor. The first thing we have to look at is how many flavors of alchemy there actually are. At the Battle Cafes, there are currently 5 different sweets you can obtain. Strawberry, Love, Berry, Clover, and Flower. Like I mentioned earlier, there are a total of 21 different items that you can earn as a reward for defeating the Cafe Master, and these are all included in that total. This means that if you just want one of the flavors, you have a 23.8% chance of getting any of the 5, but obviously that's only one flavor out of them all. If you want one specific item from the battle, you have a 4.7% chance, which is only the beginning to our problems. Although getting 5 items doesn't seem too bad when you have 3 chances a day, Alchemy doesn't have only 5 forms. The process of evolving Milserine to Alchemy is very simple. You give it the sweet item to hold, and then if you run in a circle for a bit in the overworld, your character will spin and strike a pose, which will then evolve it into Alchemy. The catch is that Alchemy's new form depends on what direction you're spinning, how long you spin for, and even what time of the day you try to evolve it. In total there are currently 45 obtainable forms, so this is definitely a lot harder than it would initially seem. But how long would it take to collect them all? Let's check it out. So with the current numbers we've looked at, we know that it's not necessarily hard to get one, but it becomes increasingly more difficult once you have to start obtaining specific sweets more and more each day. To put it in perspective, if you didn't care about which sweet you obtained and wanted to get three in one day, you'd essentially have a 1.34% chance that you would happen each day. The chance to get one after each battle is obviously calculated individually, but if you multiply that 5 out of 21 chance by itself 3 times, it comes out to be this low of a chance for 3 in 1 day. If we look at getting one specific suite 3 times, it would be much lower than that, but the odds of getting 3 of 1 item is probably not that common anyways. So what's the best way to go about completing this? 
Because odds vary each time we get a new suite, we're going to look at this in a couple ways. If we look at this probability formula, we can calculate what our expected chances are to get one of the five suites every single day. If we replace A with the chances that we won't get a suite, and replace X with the amount of chances we have in a day, it comes out to about a 55.8% chance that we can get at least one per day. That's not too bad. But what happens when we only have one berry left to obtain? Well, if we change A to 20 out of 21, we have a 13.6% chance that we'll get that one last item that we need. It's definitely not terrible odds, but if we look at it face value, that could take easily 10 to 15 days to just get a specific one that you're looking for. But thankfully, there is a pretty simple, yet tedious way that we can give ourselves some more chances. Because the game's save file is no longer stored on the cartridge, but on the Nintendo Switch itself, we can just create a new save file and have an additional 3 tries per day. Since you have a maximum of 8 profiles per Switch, you can get a total of 24 opportunities per day to get the sweets that you're looking for. Although this obviously means that you have to play until you get to Winden another 7 times, which can take around 4-8 to eight hours if you're a casual player. No matter what way you look at that range, it would take you minimum over an entire day's playtime to get to that point on all those save files, but I would be lying if I said that it wouldn't greatly increase your chances. It would bring your chances to get any of the sweets from 55% to 100%, and bring individual sweets from 13.6% to 68.9% each day. Although probability is a 0 to 100% range, you have really good chances of getting around 2 to 3 flavor sweets per day. So if you couldn't tell, this is by far the fastest legitimate method to getting all the ones that you need. It would definitely take a lot of work to set up, but it would probably save you a couple months of trying if you just want to get it done quickly. But what if I told you there was a better method? So I mentioned earlier that you couldn't adjust the Switch's clock to do more than one daily event per day, and that's only partially true. If you go into the wild area and visit any active raid and press the invite others button, you can go to your Switch's clock and adjust the date and time. When you come back to the game, if you back out and re-interact with a den, you can collect watts from the same den again. This can be used to re-roll raid battles, farm watts, but more importantly, reset the daily events. There isn't a lot of information as to why the specific method of changing the clock makes the game's reset events the way that it does, but I'm pretty sure it's because the time change isn't tracked when you're trying to connect with other players. Although it seems like Nintendo and Game Freak know about this error and are working to make adjustments, I don't think this is something they could actually fix in its entirety. But as of the date this video goes up, this is definitely the fastest method, as you can get an item about once every 5 minutes. I know there's a divide between people who use this method and those who refuse to use it, but because you can do this offline and it really doesn't give you a competitive advantage in any way, I'd recommend trying to get the sweets this way, as it could take you potentially months to do this if you're limited to only 3 times a day. I spent about 3 days grinding out battles over and over to get all the items, and I tried to keep track of how many battles I did. And if my numbers are correct, I believe it came out to around 384 battles. Considering that I collected a total of 61 sweets before I got the last one I needed, I think I got pretty unlucky considering I only needed to obtain 45 total. But now that that's all taken care of, let's get to evolving all the milsery that we bred. So the process to get each of the forms is pretty simple, and because it would be overly repetitive, we're going to use just the standard strawberry sweets as an example for each flavor. The first four flavors are based around having your Switch's clock set to daytime. If we quickly spin clockwise, we'll get vanilla cream. But if we quickly spin counterclockwise, we'll have the ruby cream form. The other two are the same concept, but in order to get them, you have to spin longer than 5 seconds. If you do it clockwise, you'll get the caramel swirl, and if you do it counterclockwise, it will give you the ruby swirl. The other four are the same idea, but for nighttime. Short clockwise will get you matcha cream. Short counterclockwise will get you salted cream. Longer clockwise will get you lemon cream. And longer counterclockwise will evolve into mint cream. The secret file flavor for each sweet is only available at dusk. If you spin counterclockwise for longer than 10 seconds, your milsery will evolve into the rainbow swirl form, which is definitely the most vibrant gradient out of the 9 options. This is definitely a pretty easy process once you've taken the time to get all the sweets, but there are a couple more things that I haven't mentioned yet. Some of you might have noticed there are actually two more sweets that I haven't touched on. The Ribbon Sweet and the Star Sweet. These two were found within the game's code, but unfortunately they aren't available at this time. I can only imagine that these will be given out as a special Wi-Fi event in the future, as they aren't available anywhere in the game, and the items or forms can't be traded according to data miners. I have no idea when or if they're ever going to get around to giving them out, but if it does happen to be released over Wi-Fi, I imagine they'll be in very limited quantities, which means those will by far be the hardest ones to obtain out of the entire bunch. 
There is a strong potential that they could do a Gigantamax raid event, where you're guaranteed one as a drop if you complete one of the Alchemy Wild Area battles. But for now, 45 is the technical total amount of forms available. The last thing I know everyone is going to mention is how long would it take to also get every shiny form. Although shiny hunting is very fast in these games, it would still take easily 200 hours of game time to hatch each and every single shiny that you need, and that's not including all the days you have to spend getting the sweets to evolve them all. I would highly recommend not doing that, but if you do, kudos, because every part of that task is entirely based on chance. Overall, this challenge wasn't necessarily too difficult to do, but the process and setup needed to make this go as smoothly as possible took a lot longer than most people would be willing to go. I don't imagine many people will want to do this, but if you do, tweet me your results at JohnStoneYT. Other than that, that's all there is to say about getting every alchemy flavor in Pokemon Sword and Shield. And that's going to do it for today's video. If you liked the video, leave a like and consider subscribing as we make more content like this very soon. If you have any other suggestions for videos that you'd like to see, leave a comment below. Follow me on Twitter to keep updated with new videos as they come out. Other than that, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.